Good morning. I'm Neil Stacy with PetSmart, and uh, we're very pleased to say that we're an Arizona-based company. And I have the pleasure to introduce our chairman and CEO, Bob Moran. And Bob joined us in 1999 as a president of PetSmart after having 16 years international experience with uh, Sears Mexico and Toys R Us Canada. And thanks to many Bob, thanks to Bob's leadership skills and impact on the company, he's contributed significantly. That finds us today. PetSmart's now the largest pet specialty retailer in the United States with more than 50,000 associates, more than 1,200 stores in the United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Over the past decade, Bob has really helped us to refocus on our core business, on our customer service, introduce, introducing services into the stores, and most importantly, changing our store environment to really drive customer service and customer engagement. Today, Bob's gonna to provide some insights on the importance of the relationship we have with the customer and how we use technology to enhance that relationship. It's my privilege to introduce Bob Moran. Bob. All those screens took me a $20 a piece, so. Uh... Actually, we have 52, actually 54 people from PetSmart today, so we've taken over the world. So uh, if there is a vote for the best presenter, I think I have a leg up. <laughs> uh, I, going back to my picture, I, I, got, I came in last night and I was hearing that, uh, is that really my dog? Uh, yes, it is my dog, it's Tatum Shea Moran. And let me give you a little bit of a story behind it because uh, uh, we ended up, my wife and I did a lot of uh, charity work with Arizona Humane Society, and we would take dogs in, <coughs> cats in, uh, and usually because of uh, a bad situation. For example, we, uh, a poodle was hit, and we were, we were going down to pick up the poodle at the Arizona Humane Society. We stopped at the PetSmart store at Tatum & Shea in, in Phoenix, and we found as we picked out a bed, we, uh, we saw this little puppy, Shih Tzu puppy, uh, and it fell out, and we found that uh, it had no knees and uh, was disabled, and we felt that it was probably abandoned by, a, by a, <clears throat> a breeder. So anyway, we took care of the poodle, got the poodle adopted, we kept uh, Tatum, and Tatum is, uh, doesn't realize that she's disabled because uh, we carry her around all the time, and uh, everybody loves her, I love her, she's the greatest dog in the world, so it's, uh, it's a wonderful experience. I have to tell you, I'm, I am thrilled to be here uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, PetSmart has a very deep association with University of Arizona, and, Part of the 54 people, I think half of them are alumni of uh, University of Arizona, and they promised that they would sing Bear Down for me, but uh, I'm not sure if they will. But I also have a personal association with uh, U of A, not only because of our investment in education here in Arizona, but the uh, investment into the retail center because we really believe in it. And I also have a personal investment because my son is a graduate of the University of Arizona. I was hoping for a discount, didn't get one, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> Um, but I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here because it's, uh, it's great to come here. This is my third time here. Uh, and if you looked at my history, the first time I presented here, I was the uh, CEO of Sears uh, Roebuck de Mexico. And I actually had hair then. So I just love the evolution of this. So anyway, I, <laughs> I'm flattered to be speaking here today. <clears throat> but I have to admit that I was a little bit, bit, a bit surprised that PetSmart was invited to a conference that was all about technology. That's because what's made us successful and will continue to make us successful uh, and make us successful as the best pet specialty retailer possibly in the world has little to do with technology, but it has everything to do with the connection with the customer. Building authentic and long lasting relationships with our pet parents, and that's what we call them, is the core of our passion. It's something that our associates do every day in our stores. And it's something our competitors just can't replicate. And it's something that can't be done with technology alone. We are, however, using technology in new ways to enable us to build these relationships. And as we continue to learn to improve our connection with our pet parents, we know technology will play not only an important part today, but a more important part in the future. So today, I'd like to share with you first how we run our business, and then the ways in which technology then will continue to help us provide an unmatched customer experience, strengthening that bond with our pet parent customers. So let's start with the numbers. How many here in the room have a pet? Raise your hand. Fantastic. Actually more representative than what we have in the US and Canada. 61% of the households have pets and, and a lot of them have multi-pets. 
And by the way, the people that didn't raise their hand, the people who raised their hands grow live longer than you. So you should think about that. <laughs> the pet industry is nearly $50 billion business. And with more than $6 billion in sales, PetSmart is the leading pet specialty retailer. We're also the leader in pet services, pet grooming, training, boarding, and doggy day camp with sales of approximately $675 million in 2011. We have more than 1,200 stores and almost 200 pet hotels in the United States and Canada and are on track to continue to build 40 to 50 new stores every year. We offer more than 10,000 products at great prices and it's, and it's more accurate that we actually are in the solution business rather than the product business because those who are pet parents know that having a pet, pet, caring for a pet, is almost equal to caring for a child. And they also, the pets have dietary, behavioral, and health needs. And the pet parents need help finding solutions, not just right products. So let's take a look at what drives our passion. Our vision, pretty simple, because I think one of our roles is uh, CEOs and leaders is to drive complexity into simplicity. Our vision is pretty simple, and our associates drive that to their heart and they personalize it. And our vision is to provide total lifetime care to every pet, every parent, every time. And our associates deliver on this vision every day, day in and day out, building relationships with our customers and also creating a com compelling customer experience and ultimately helping our business to thrive. To deliver on this vision, we focus on developing helpful and knowledgeable associates who can assist our pet parents in finding the solutions that I just previously mentioned. Because caring for a living pet is a lot more complicated than buying a bag of food or buying a toy. It's about understanding the needs of a pet, and especially someone who can't talk to you, and translating that need into precise brands and formulations of food or a type of a chew, chew toy. Bringing our vision to life is centered around passionate associates and also led by passionate and effective leaders. Our stores are a key differentiator against the competition. Our stores offer a fun and unique environment, and they're enjoyable and they're easy to shop. Our culture is strong because it's a culture by design, not by default. We like to think that our associates know what to do and how to do it because of the culture. And as part of our culture, pets and their parents always come first, always. We never put budgetary restrictions on doing the right thing. And every day, our associates help pet parents find ways to provide the best possible care for pets. We remain committed to saving the lives of homeless pets. We pet partner with PetSmart Charities to adopt more than 1,100 pets every day in our stores. And over the past 17 years, we have helped find homes for nearly 5 million dogs and cats. And finally, we have made innovation part of our DNA. We have been very successful over the past several years in introducing big ideas that have fundamentally advanced our business. But we also look at existing processes through the lens of innovation, because there's always a better way of doing things. We actually have a saying inside the company, have a healthy disrespect for the status quo, because if you do that, you will, will find a better way of doing something. All these elements added together create an unmatched customer experience. When you walk into our stores with your pet, because your pets are very welcome into our stores, what do you see? You will see that we have nearly 50 square feet of aquariums in every store, about seven species of small animals and 15 species of reptiles. I was thinking about giving one out in the gift bag, but I decided not to. <laughs> You'll see dogs in the salon being groomed, attending a training class, or enjoying playtime with other, other dogs in doggy day camp. And if you come in our stores during an adoption event, you'll find an atmosphere full of energy and excitement and enthusiasm for matching an adoptable pet for a caring pet parent in a caring home. Shopping in our stores is far different than your average retail shopping experience. And that unique experience starts with our passionate associates. Our associates are drawn to PetSmart and hired because they're passionate about pets, and the vast majority are pet parents themselves. And through our dedication to training, our associates are knowledgeable and committed to helping pets to be healthy and happy and live a long and fruitful life. Our customer engagement model is anchored in connecting with our customers 
in an authentic way and providing assistance that pet parents need and are looking for. And we continue to evolve this model because we know what we have to do every day to stay ahead of our competition. So now that you have a background of our business, I'd like to give you some examples how we're using technology to strengthen the bond with our pet parents. We just recently created a call center and an online reservation request process for pet hotels. It doesn't offer all the capabilities we need to create a seamless customer experience yet, but it's a great start. Um, we're also using social media to connect with our pet parents. Facebook is really a fun, interactive way for pet parents to connect with each other, as well as our brand, sharing their photos and also their stories. And it's a great way for us to connect with pet parents and get their feedback on products and our services. Twitter is another tool that we use to have conversations with pet parents. And we use it to deliver tips about timely pet topics and issues about solutions. And it's a great way for us to engage our pet parents in a conversational questions that encourage replies and sharings and also give us information that we can share with other pet parents. YouTube allows us to share videos on a variety of topics that help educate pet parents with common problems and solutions faced by other pet parents. A true omni-channel strategy will give our customers a compelling, integrated, and branded customer experience regardless of the channel they choose in our stores, online, or through a mobile device. We know we already have strength in our brand, knowledgeable associates, and a great store experience, so we're focused on delivering these strengths in more ways through the use of technology. We're focused on, on making our website the destination for all things pet. Featuring, featuring trusted information on pet health, nutrition, and training. We do this by featuring our own care guides, which are content developed by our, our own in-house in veterinarians on how to care for pets. We have solution-focused and customized content, like Did You Know campaign, that offers up common solutions to commonly overlooked challenges in pet care. For example, who here uses baby shampoo to shampoo their dogs? worst thing you can possibly do. So get to know our do, Did You Know campaign. And we'll continue to use that as a forum to build engagement with and among our pet parents. And as I alluded to earlier, we're investing in a comprehensive technology system that will provide a seamless customer experience for our pet parents who want to book their services appointment online. Because we care for our pets that are in our hotel, in our grooming salons, in our training classes, in our doggy day camp, and this is a system that is far out, is, is far from out of the box solutions. We found that in order to make it work right for our pet parents and their pets, we need to do a lot of customization. And finally, we all know how important it is for our customers to have the ability to shop on their mobile devices. And that's why we're making it a priori priority to offer our pet parents functionality to scan products in our stores for more information, look up inventory, and scan coupons. So we're not going to take on Apple in the technology arena, but that's not what we need to do. We know that the valuable role technology can play in helping help to strengthen our bond with our pet parents, and we'll continue to find innovative ways to integrate it into our customer experience. We'll continue to do things like run Facebook contests and Twitter campaigns to engage our customers in conversations and give them a way to share their stories that create a bond and a sense of community. We're building a web experience that lives up to our in-store experience and building a seamless and branded shopping experience across all channels because that's what our customer expects from us. Creating a bond with our pet parents has been a cornerstone to our success and it's how we differentiate ourselves from the competition and how we, we will continue to move forward in the future. And we know that technology can play an important role in helping us strengthen these all important bonds and build new ones. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you, and I'd love to take your questions. And I can't see a thing, so I can't, oh, there's. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Shank. I'm with Pace Properties from St. Louis, Missouri. How are you? My question was, you had mentioned the total lifetime care for your pet. How much does total lifetime care cost? Ooh, ooh. You don't want to know that because you won't get a pet. No. 
Actually, uh, we've done a number of uh, views of this, and it's uh, really fascinating. One, pets come into people's lives because they create bonds. And um, the, the way we look at it is when you acquire a pet, you're a pet owner, and we help you become a pet parent. And that bonding process is really important because it does have positive effects in your personal life and your social life. Um, using a dog as an example, it can run anywhere from uh, $700 to uh, you know, $1,000 a year. And uh, one of our purposes on Total Lifetime Care is that we can extend the life of the pet. Um, when we started this, uh, the average life of a pet was about uh, 7.2 years. That's all breeds. Uh, we're up to about 8.8, uh, .8, and, and I think that's great. Um, but if you look at that from a total lifetime of a pet, it's probably around, um, you can say it's, it could get up to well-kept, good home, $12,000 uh, over a lifetime. Uh, we look at it as a lifetime of a customer, and it could be as much as $65,000 over a lifetime of a pet, because you would look at the average life of a pet to an average life of a human being. Uh, multiple times bringing pets into the household, uh, it could be about $65,000. And we like that part. <laughs> and nobody from PetSmart can ask a question. That's a, that's a joke. <laughs> Well, well, you're hearing from a, a customer who's well on the way to that $65,000 number uh, with, with the ones in our house. Uh, I've been noticing in my visits to PetSmart, I, I think, um, a little bit of an increase in the store brand products. I wonder if you could tell me where you're headed. I'm um, sorry, I didn't hear your question. I, I think I've been noticing a little bit of an increase in, in your private label products oh, yeah. line yeah. in the store. Could you, could you address where you're heading with that? Um, you know, I was just talking to Terry, and you know, I, we were just talking about our challenges that we have online, and how do we really bring exclusivity uh, to the marketplace and really compete against other other brands, other channels. And uh, we we started this about uh, four years ago, building global sourcing capabilities, and then building a proprietary brand. We call it proprietary brands, not private private label, because we own them. And uh, we're up to about 25% of our product sales as being exclusive to us. Now, getting to 25%, I don't know if the right answer is 30, because you don't want to dilute that. So we're going to be a little bit more careful as we go higher. We also have about 11 to 12% of our sales service, and we don't know exactly how high how that can go. But we think uh, our target area is to be around 40% being exclusive. Um, and uh, we're well on our way. And then we'll keep on you know, tweaking that as we, we understand more and more from the customer. But uh, we like that answer a lot, because if you, you go to market with a lot of exclusivity, you can tell a lot of great personal stories and exclusive stories. And we love our partnerships. We, we also, for example, I, you know, Terry and I have something in common with, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't mention it, Martha Stewart. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hope you're still using it. Um, but we do GNC, Marvel Comics, uh, Toys R Us. Uh, we have these exclusive partnerships that actually uh, bring a lot of unique product um, and solutions to the customer. So we're going to be doing more and more of that as we go through it too. So I hope that answers your question. Hi, I'm Debbie Pirin with GFK, and um, I spend a lot of time in Asia, and I just wanted to know whether or not you have any plans to go to a place like China, because unbelievable what's happened in the past three or four years there with respect to pet ownership because of the, the young people and, and not staying with their families and, and moving on, and the older generation has really moved to pets, and everywhere you go, people are walking dogs. Great, great question. I'm pulling out $20 because somebody bet me last night that somebody would ask a question about international. So at the back of the room, I'll pay you. Um, I have 16 years overseas. I spent a lot of time down in uh, Peru and Mexico and uh, Spain and, um, and Canada and uh, learned a lot of lessons internationally. And uh, so one, let's talk about pets. Pets follow middle class. Uh, if you don't have a strong middle class, people don't have pets. Um, actually, in some of the places in Asia, Asia they eat pets. Uh, so let's be careful with what we say. So, uh, um, so I'm, I'm kind of putting this under an international question. So um, as we look at developing nations that are actually getting beyond being developing nations, a middle class is being formed, and pets uh, are becoming more and more important. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about international, I'll tell you why. And one of the things I've learned all my years working overseas, never made any money. Now, I made operating profits, but since I don't control central banks and monetary policy, 
with a stroke of a pen, there's a major devaluation, and then you have to write down your assets. And when you add up the write down your assets with your operating profits, over a long period of time, you don't make a lot of money. So for me to go international, um, I think you have to think about investment on the ground and mitigating risk associated with that. And there's all kinds of different models to do that where you can bring expertise to it, so, and we're exploring them. So we like the development of the middle class. We like the fact that pets become more important and they become part of the family. We think we're probably the preeminent uh, authority in that in the world. And we think we can build a number of partnerships where we mitigate some of that risk, but we don't have to do it right now. And that's the beauty of it. Um, we have such a long runway ahead of us, uh, especially as we focused on productivity, not only sales per square foot, margin per square foot, cost, less cost per square foot. We think we have such a major runway in front of us um, looking forward, which a lot of few retailers have. Macy's has a, has a great story behind it too. But there's very few retailers have that type of uh, opportunity. And I want to make sure I, I'm, I'm very thoughtful about how we go international. But I think I'd like to wait a couple more years to see further development of the middle class uh, before we take our first steps. But they don't have to do it right now, which is exciting. So I hope that answers your question. Hey, you can just whisper to me and I'll whisper back. <laughs> Hi, Kayla Worm from the University of Wisconsin Stout. A current psychographic trend places a strong emphasis on animals because pets are members of the family. Are there current plans to extend in-store pet hotels and doggy day camps? And which age demographic has responded best to these pet luxuries? So, can you ask me? I, I didn't hear about the parts about the pet hotels. About the oh, I'm sorry. Uh, which uh, are there current plans to expand in-store pet hotels and doggy day oh, camps? Yeah. God, we love that. Um, the pet hotels uh, are just a special business, especially the doggy day camp. Uh, during the recession, uh, it, there's a high correlation between human travel and, and boarding and pet hoteling. However, doggy day camp didn't fall off at all. It actually increased. Uh, so we love the combination of the business. And um, as we have been lear learning through our pet hoteling, um, we think right now our, our maximum amount of stores, as we know today, is about 1,700. And probably in that world, we'll have um, somewhere in a world of around 300 to 400 pet hotels. So yes, we're going to continue expanding that as we expand our stores. It's a lot cheaper to build them with a new store than it is to go into an existing store because you have to deconstruct and reconstruct. So the capital cost on that, and you know, again, going back to my financial background, initial investment is very important. If you can minimize that as, as much as possible and then get the proceeds from it, you can get the right NPV and right IRRs, and that's really important to do it. So definitely, we're going to do that. We probably will not do independent ones. Uh, why? Because we would like to drive um, customers inside our store because we think we have, you know, if we've, we, you know I, I talked about complexity and simplicity. We have the total lifetime care model, but we also have something that drives that we've used over the last 10 years. It's under D, O, and G, uh, and this, every single associate understands this. D stands for delighting the customer, O is for operating excellence, and G is for growing services. And D and G are our points of differentiation. O is the price of admission. You better be in stock. You better have friendly and knowledgeable associates. You, have to, you better have non-smelling pet stores. Um, you have to have fast checkouts, all those types of things. If you do that well, um, our customers look at the D and G side, and that's our points of differentiation. G, pet hoteling, is very important to us. So I hope that answered your question. Hi, uh, Ken Goldberg with Sprint. Hi, Ken. Uh, hi there. Um, we have two Yorkies. Uh, <laughs> the $65,000 uh, number, we seem to be spending that on treats, so I'm wondering. <laughs> now, actually, the question I do want to ask you is, is that what's kind of neat is at checkout, we sometimes are lucky enough on our receipt to, if we call in or log in, we get a little bit of a discount on the next purchase. So I'm curious how that vehicle is working for you as, in terms of take rate and what you guys you know, get out of that in, as you, uh, you know, mold your business. You, you're talking about pet perks? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, pet, pet Perks is our loyalty card. Uh, about 75% of our transactions are run through Pet Perks. And there's all kinds of immediate benefits. We have about 1,100 to 1,300 products or items that are discounted for our Pet Perks customers. Um, and then with the data, um, not only do we look at behavioral sciences of different breeds, different customers, we look at 
giving customized incentives. And obviously, what I think I'm hearing, you're not getting the incentives that you should get. So afterwards, give me your name, and I'll make sure that you get your dog treats for your Yorkies. But uh, <laughs> that always, always happens. I don't know why. Um, but uh, we have about 36 million names. It's not representative of all our customers, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way of having a database, looking at behavioral sciences, also driving incentives and campaigns off of it. It's really working really well. It's one of our uh, foundations, core foundations of how we communicate and talk to the customers and how we can customize and incent customers where our competitions don't even know we're doing it. And, uh, and through that, we've been able, if you think about what we've done over the last two and a half years, we probably have created about $4 billion of shareholder value. We have had an average EPS growth of about 28%. Uh, shareholder return has been probably 29.5% because of if we have a dividend. And, uh, and the customers are, new customers are trialing us, and that's how we build loyalty. So uh, love the, we love our Pet Perks card. Um, if you don't like it, talk to me afterwards, and I'll, I'll help you out. I'll make sure you're, uh, you'll get inundated with uh, customized offers. <laughs> uh, Bob, um, we have six dogs, and we're way back here. You can't you? see oh, the there dogs. You are. Okay. <laughs> we have six dogs and they're all pet smart dogs. Um, some are happy, some are not as happy. But not really too worried about the dogs. What my interest is, because we spend a lot of time at PetSmart with these dogs. Um, anyway, what my question is, is there's some, we have some great associates that we work with. Some great associates. They know all of our dogs, they know their problems. You know, we have them all cut at PetSmart which I think, you know, I could do just as good a job, but it, my wife doesn't agree. But uh, anyway, the, the, so my, my question is, yes, I'm getting to the question. My question is, you know, as retail, as we all know in retail, keeping great associates, keeping them on board, it's a tough business. You know, it's, it's tough. What are some of the things you're doing at PetSmart to keep some of these great people we have in the stores that are near us? Um. That's a great question. By the way, I, I wasn't waiting for the question. I, I, I love the fact that you had six dogs. I, I love your wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're not the decision maker. <laughs> so, no, I apologize. <laughs> but, uh, but by the way, about 73% of our transactions are female. So we usually say she is our, is our, our customer. And um, you know, the, the female is usually the gatekeeper and the decision maker. So I'm glad it's that in your household that is exactly where you're going. Uh, we put a ton of emphasis on um, how we work with our associates. And let's start with the acquisition process. You know, acquiring talent is very important to us. And we have all kinds of uh, processes and systems and behavioral science behind it to make sure that we pick the right associates, and having a pet is very important, by the way. Um, but uh, through our interviewing process, uh, the selection process is very important to us because then we can really work with some really good talent to take them through what they need to do. A lot of, uh, you know, retailing is known for high turnover, and uh, what we've found is um, usually where that turnover happens is, is in the first 90 days. And uh, so we put a lot of emphasis on um, training, developing our associates over the 90 days. And we have a culture, and, and, and I, I mentioned that it's, it's by design and not by um, default. It, our, our culture is about people owning their space, uh, feeling uh, wanted and also feeling like they can make a difference. And uh, that's very important, especially when you have 48,000 associates that you can drive that. We, um, we kind of define our culture in, um, in one way. What happens when the boss is not around? Uh, because if you created the environment to do the right thing, the right thing will be done. So there's a lot of empowerment to our associates. So we try to get that off uh, and, and, and developed within our associates pretty early on. Uh, through this process, we have uh, really cut back on turnover. And uh, it doesn't hurt either when, uh, uh, when you have 28% EPS growth uh, because there's a lot of things that are going right. Uh, we also believe, as I said, um, we have a healthy disrespect for the status quo, so everybody can make a contribution to how we can do things better. And um, I think you also talked about how the associates that you go into the store know you by name, know your pets by name. That's very important to us because um, 
that also builds a loyalty not, not only to the company but to the, to the customers and pet parent customers. So we do a lot of work there. We also do a lot of work in leadership development. And uh, if I give you a very quick uh, Dwight Eisenhower quote, uh, it's probably driven by, you know, how do you make others do what you want to do because they want to do it? They want to do it is really the important part because you're, what you're really doing is creating an environment for people to reach further potential. So the combination of training, leadership development, culture, environment, um, for some reason it works. And, uh, and, it, and what it does is really acknowledge each and every associate as a personal contributor to the overall brand, and it's uh, pretty powerful, it's pretty powerful. Hello. Hi there, uh, my name is Justin Gatz. I'm a retailing student at the University of Arizona. And with sustainability being such an important Im uh, issue, especially with this new generation of pet parents, what are some green initiatives that you're doing in your stores, your products, and most importantly, your services? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And, um, you know, sustainability by itself is uh, probably would never get off the ground. Sustainability to drive process change and look for what the customer is looking for, plus it's also cost effective, is very powerful. And um, we're doing things like, for example, uh, we're looking at redesign of stores, uh, the cut back on uh, use of electricity. Um, we're doing, um, like flooring, for example. Uh, we used to put tiles on our floors. Now we put polished cement. Well, it sounds like, well, why is that sustainable? Well, you think about the chemicals that have to be used to polish tile uh, almost on a daily basis and think about that you don't have to do that with polished cement, major change. Um, so we, we're not perfect in the sustainability world, but uh, we have opened up the, the door to get more and more ideas. And um, uh, over the last three years, we have published a sustainability report uh, and everything we design from DCs to stores to processes, we put that in the forefront. And we've been able to you know, not only take a lot of cost out of, uh, out of the company, but we, um, we can actually now tell a story that we're moving towards a sustainable company. So um, there's all kinds of things you do. The simplest things like you know, paper bag, you know, plastic bags versus uh, uh, you know, selling you know, a PetSmart charity bag for 99 cents, uh, it's very powerful. Uh, and when you have, as they say, you know, 1,200 stores, the small changes like that add up uh, pretty quickly. So um, there's so many ideas. I, you know, I, I, you know, I could list them, but I, you know, this, everything we do goes through a filter on sustainability. like church. <laughs> Hi, Bob, right in front. I'm Kari Holti, and I'm also with the University of Wisconsin Stout, and I'm a new kitten owner. So my question for you, I always seem to go into PetSmart for a bag of food, and I come out with an outfit and five toys. So um, I'm, wondering <laughs> I'm wondering if you've been able to measure at all how much of your business is coming from impulse shopping, and what the ability to bring your pet into the store has affected that number at all? Um, well, let's start with bringing pets in the store. Well, one is because it's not, it's not because we want to sell more. It's, it's, it, it's, we, we love it. And we do it for two reasons. One is our associates love the pets and they love to hear about the stories and that's a great example of a pet parent customer listening, um, knowing that the associates knew their pets and what their needs are. But it's also for other pet parents to talk to other pet parents. And if you just sit back in our store, I have a seven-year-old daughter. I take her up to, uh, uh, periodically, up to a, a PetSmart store, and we stay about two or three hours. I, I think it's incredibly uncomfortable for the associates, but my daughter loves it. <laughs> and we sit, in fr we sit in front of Doggy Day Camp, and you know, we watch the adoption event, and we go over and see the reptiles and small animals and the frogs and everything like that. And then there's so, much thing, so many things going on inside the store, but what I like to watch is the... Uh, the interchange of photos and the explanation of how the names came about on the pets between pet parents, and it, it kind of forms a, a form of community. Well, the design of the store is around food, because that's the one consistent, it's on a regular basis. That's the trip driver. Uh, what you really want to do from a merchandising point of view, as you have that necessity called food, what else can you 
drive through NCAP presentation, drive aisle presentations, solution presentations, or conversational presentations that we can actually make you think there might be other things you do. Uh, it's extremely valuable for us. Um, so it, it does a lot of add-on sales. Um, and we also have, uh, as we use our, our CRM database, we understand a number of uh, behaviors that are very important to us for the customers to spend more of their share a wallet within our stores and drive more frequency. So we drive a couple things. One is try to present our stores to drive that impulse. And it's usually in the hard goods area. You know, as you say, you bought, you know, you bought some apparel or you bought a new toy or, or something like that on every single trip. Um, that's great. If you think about our training classes, this is the best thing in the world. People pay us $99 for an eight week course and they come into our stores. Guess what happens when they come in our stores? They get exposed to other things. And they walk out every time from the training class with something else in their hands, which is absolutely wonderful. So uh, retailing is designed about that um, add-on. Uh, usually it's around hard goods, which are more discretionary, impulse type of uh, items. And location in the store and presentation in the store and stories in the store are very important to that. So uh, it's very important to our business. And, and there's so many solutions out there. You know, I, you know, I, I talked about that one solution about you know, uh, I, I used to do this when I didn't know anything about dogs or cats and work at PetSmart. I, I always washed my dogs with baby shampoo because I thought that was the, the best, best thing you can do out there. It's the worst thing you can do and, uh, to, the, to a dog's skin. And um, because of, you know, the research that has been done, the R&D work that has been done, but there's so many of those solutions that we can become a trusted advisor. And in that conversation, not only we build trust, uh, but we also build you know, a solution-based uh, add-on. So I hope that answers your question. But thank you for coming in and thank you for getting a cat. You didn't look like a cat person. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I remember a couple years ago at a at an analyst meeting, somebody asked that question about um, to the CEO of Lowe's, and uh, he felt that about going international. He felt going international. He was already going international because he was thinking about going into New York City. Uh, <laughs> uh, we don't have a big presence in New York, and we're learning how to do that. Uh, it's a different customer. It's a different base. It's like international. We have, uh, we have identified 54 different sites and locations in New York. Uh, my dream, I'm gonna do a little bit of lobbying here. My dream is about four or five years down the road is that uh, we actually have um, something in the Macy's Thanksgiving parade so that we can build brand knowledge in New York City. Um, but we got, we got a lot more to do. We, we have about six stores in uh, the boroughs right now and uh, we're doing a lot of learning from that. It's a different customer, you know, delivery is very important. Um, you know, size of bags is important, the assortment's different. So we're doing a lot of learning on that. Uh, and we're, we're a company that tests, pilot, and roll out, because I've always worked with companies that kind of came up with the idea and they did a national rollout and when they woke up, they found out that it wasn't a great idea because they didn't test or pilot it. So we're kind of testing and piloting New York City right now. and. Uh, uh, we're learning a lot from that. Uh, we also just went down to Puerto Rico. And uh, by the way, we're doing a lot of learning in Puerto Rico so that we can also bring that knowledge to also the New York City. Uh, it's very important to us. So a lot more work to do. Uh, and it's not that we're being cautious or slow. We just want to do our learning. The, uh, the format that works in North Jersey doesn't work in the city. So, um, and I've always said that about international too. The format that will be successful internationally does not exist in our portfolio today because every single country will be different. New York, I'm not trying to be funny, is like a different country because of the needs and wants, aspirations of the pet parent customers. I mean, there's a ton out there. So underserved, but we're going to be able, we'll definitely be coming to New York in a big way. Maybe I can get Terry to come in one of the stores. <laughs> Am I done? Ha <laughs>